Welcome. In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of using integration by parts as a technique for integration. And this time we're going to do so by evaluating the definite integral of the arc sine of x from 0 to 1 with respect to x. So let's start by saying let u equal sine inverse of x and dv equal dx. Then the derivative of the inverse trig function sine inverse of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And then v is equal to x. And as an aside, in case you're a little rusty, here's the derivative of sine inverse of x over some constant a. It's equal to 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay, so now we can use parts to rewrite this. We have sine inverse of x, and we're going to multiply that by x. And this is evaluated from 0 to 1. And then from that, we're going to subtract the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared dx times x. And this is still from 0 to 1. Now this is in essence two different problems, so I'm going to call this one A and this one here B. And our integral from 0 to 1 of sine inverse of x dx is equal to A minus, because we have this minus sign here, B. So let's work these out. So let's work these out separately. First A x sine inverse of x evaluated from 0 to 1. That's equal to 1 times sine inverse of 1 minus 0 times sine inverse of 0. 0 times anything is just 0, so this term vanishes. And we're left with just the inverse sine of 1. Since the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, it follows that sine inverse of 1 is equal to pi over 2. And again, when we're dealing with sine inverse, you must restrict the angle. So that's, in this case, the range. This value here, if this is your angle theta, is restricted to values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, let's work on B now. We need to solve this using a substitution. So let w equal 1 minus x squared, then dw equals negative 2x dx, or negative 1 half dw equals x dx. I have x dx here in my numerator, so I can rewrite this as the integral of negative 1 half times, and this will be 1 over the square root of w, and 1 over the square root of w is just equal to w to the negative 1 half power. So w to the negative 1 half power dw. And now we need to adjust our limits of integration since we had a 0 and a 1 here. So when x equals 0, w equals 1 minus 0 squared or just 1. When x equals 1, w equals 1 minus 1 squared, or just 0. So we replace our lower bound with 1 and our upper bound with 0. When we're integrating, the smaller number has to be the lower bound, so we have to flip our limits of integration, which means we multiply this entire integral by a negative, ending up with 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of w to the negative 1 half dw. This integrates to 1 half times w to the 1 half power over 1 half. Why is that? Well, the integral of w to the negative 1 half dw, that's equal to w to the negative 1 half plus 1 divided by negative 1 half plus 1. So that's w to the 1 half power divided by 1 half. You could also write this as 2w to the 1 half, and actually I should have a negative in front of both of those. 
No matter, I'm not going to do that this time because I'm multiplying by a one half and dividing by a one half. So I know those are just going to become one since one half divided by one half is equal to one. And now we're evaluating this from zero to one. So we end up with zero to the one half, excuse me. So we end up with one to the one half power minus zero to the one half power, which is just one. Okay, so A is equal to pi over two and B is equal to one. So let's put that all together. This tells me that the integral from zero to one of sine inverse of x dx is equal to pi over two, and that's from here. And then this minus sign we just kept, so I'm gonna move that down, minus the value that B came out to, and B was this integral, and B was just one, so minus one. And if you pop this into your calculator, you'll get about 0 0.5708, and that's to four decimal places. I hope this video was helpful.